stories. Well, you've been through so many, many challenges in your life, but God has been faithful to you, as you said. He's a faithful mm-hmm. God who brought you through, and he will never let you go. Lord, there may be many of you watching tonight who've had similar circumstances to Harry's, challenges like Harry's mm-hmm. had, but you've heard tonight that there's one who can help you. The most important thing is you have a relationship with Jesus. It's right, not religion. Me. It's a relationship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Savior. You know, the first we're going to be celebrating Christmas soon. And Christmas is all about Jesus coming with one purpose, and that was to go to the cross to die in your place, to pay the penalty for your sins. Because the Bible says we've all sinned. There's none righteous, not one. And Jesus came to die on that cross and shed his blood to wash your sins away. He wants to come into your life. He wants to give you a new life. He wants to show you a new way, a wonderful way. And you can have that everlasting, eternal life. You don't need to wait till you die to have eternal life. You can receive eternal life even today. And what I'd like to do is pray a prayer with you where you can invite Jesus to come into your life and be your savior. And what we have to do is confess that we are sinners Repent of our sin, let's turn away from the old way of life and invite Jesus to come into our heart and life. And he will. He never <clears throat> breaks a promise. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. If you open the door of your heart tonight, he will come in. So I'm going to say a little prayer. And I ask you to pray this prayer sincerely after me and mean it with all your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner because the Bible says we have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sins. And you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. For making me a child of God. Help me from this day forward to follow you, to serve you, to live for you. And I look forward to that day when you will come again and take me to be with yourself forever. Amen. If you pray that prayer tonight, please contact us on our hotline, plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Or also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find, <clears throat> you can click on how can I get to know God. You can also get a Bible app and learn more, the Word of God. But I'm going to hand over to George now. I believe I have some <coughs> questions for Harry. Okay, George, over to you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Harry. Hi, George. Now then, Harry, uh, what was the bus route you used to drive in Wigan? What number? Oh. What number bus route did you use to drive in Wigan? Every every bus route I uh, I was on, I covered everyone, well, and every type of bus as well. Remind me not to go on them because they sound a bit rough down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I right. many up in you. So, how many years did you actually spend on the buses then? Altogether, thirty-eight and a half years. Okay. Now you said earlier that you wanted to try. You were going to try the fire service or the uh, constabulary. Have you any regrets for the fact that you didn't get into those? 
No, I did everything that as a kid I dreamed of. So no regrets. Good. Excellent. When it comes to leaving the TA, I knew God was calling me to working with children. Now, at first, that was a challenge. But I felt I, I believe Jesus was far greater than the TA. And when I went to my commanding officer, Major Claxton, he said, I don't want to lose you. You're a good soldier. And a, a guy who became a sergeant major said, you'd have been a sergeant before me because he said, he's a good soldier. But I just wanted to serve Christ with all my heart. Mm -hmm. You said you wanted to work with children, is that correct? Is it yeah, for six years we did that, me and my wife, Kath. Tell us a little bit about that. How, how, what was the work like? What was the work like itself? It, you, you just invited children in. You know, I went to see the parents. I made sure they knew who it was. Uh, it's not just good to do right. You need to be seen to do right, particularly when you, you're handling children. Mm -hmm. And I visited every home of every child. So that, um, the parents were, because he was in a back bedroom upstairs with another couple with us. And we had 32 kids in the back bedroom before our children started coming along more. Uh, so the parents were, were fine. You know, they could come and see if they wanted. We left the front door off. And then we got the Methodist Chapel and uh, that was all new ball game. We went to 62 on a Monday night. We did a lot of trips. I've still a journal. Linda found it. Uh, if I took children on a trip, every name was written down and every name ticked off. And on one trip, we had two coaches. We took 77 children wow. on a day trip. Uh, we went to Northern Safari Park. We took 50 children. We come back with 47 children and three monkeys. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love them. I just love them. And even now, I pray for them. And recently, one phoned me up and said, Harry, she was crying. So many things had happened to her. And uh, I prayed with her. I quoted to a test for me and scripture. And she'd once said, Harry, we watch you all these years. We only looked after my dad for seven months. Our nurse of you managed. And I said, Janet, that first hour. <laughs>
And even, you know, you can cross people in wheelchairs and people stand up talking down to them. I'll kneel down. It taught me a lot with Kathleen there. But through Cass' illness, it took a lot of hardness out of me. Instead of focusing on me, because sometimes a rejection you're not going to through your life would dog you. Uh, but it caused me to focus on Kathleen. And also, I had to get near to God. I needed his strength day by day. Mm-hmm. Now, you said you grew up in a foster home. And there were six kids. Have you ever seen or met any of the other kids that you grew up with in the foster home since? I, I don't know. Oh, no, oh, the foster home, yes. Yeah, yeah. My foster family. I mean, the good thing is my foster family became my family. Wow. And Alice, the youngest, uh, in 1991, I found out I had three siblings. One I was told was murdered in Lincoln in 61. One was given to a neighbour and one was left in hospital. Alison is on the computer, puts my name on the computer, Harry Rollins, Hemsley, Scotland. And the one I was told was murdered in Lincoln was allowed well in Melbourne, Australia. Also, I didn't even know I had a middle name until I was 15. I didn't know I had a, a middle name. I didn't know I was born. I saw a man's name there. And in, when I was 20, I found him. He said I wasn't his son. And six years ago, I found out he wasn't my son. He was in prison when I was conceived. There's two more children she's left somewhere. In 2018, I found a sister's grave in Loch Gilfed in Scotland. So all these things have, have happened. Uh, but my sister in Australia, after Kath died, my son said, hey, Dad, I bought you a ticket to go and see her. Wow. I've been out three times. And at first, it was a shock. Uh, Linda's been out with me and she said, you like two peas in a pod. <laughs> uh, she, lovely. And I have friends in Australia, of course, as well. So, yeah, God will turn everything to good. I believe that. I stood on that word. Everything we go through, he'll turn for his glory. Even tragedy, death, he'll bring to his glory because he said so. Now, you said you were quite angry and you were, um, you said, my life, my way at one particular stage. Do you yeah. still think like that today? My life, my way? My way, my life, God's way. It changed. When did, that all, when did that all change, Harry? Well, when I get through the door of death, there's a, a new city. Abram said, I look for a city whose building foundation is God. That city was alive for Abram to say that. Mm-hmm. But even now, I, I go to bed pray. I'll be on Bible study, I'll listen to study on the computer. I wake up praying, I wake up singing. Prayer is a lifestyle. It's a personal relation with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would never want it anyway. I love to praise. I, people think I'm cracking. I love when I praise God, I don't believe in doing it quietly. <laughs> it's exuberant, it's exuberant prayer. Because I serve an exuberant God who deserves it. And I love to praise and worship. You did mention that actually about singing hymns on the bus. Was that allowed at the time, or you know, were you able to preach on the buses? Well, I, I thought I was singing quietly, I didn't realize the passenger could hear me. <laughs> actually, because if I sing quietly, the passenger said it's beautiful. But there are times I, I've been thinking the bus is empty, and I would let it go full force singing the Lord's Prayer, particularly that last part. And then you hear a patter of feet coming from downstairs, and you think, oops. <laughs> Another bus that had the same experience. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. And I met some of the toughest characters you can meet on the bus. It's scared, tattooed, but I had no fear. I had no fear because God, the background I had. One guy full of tattoos on the Isle of Arran. And he looked a mess. And is the last place Linda and Roger and the full family had all this. She said, can we go? And we come down the driveway. This guy, he looks awful. There's no room for tattoos. Big holes in his ears. So I stopped to say hello, and Linda's pulling me hand. And I said, hello. He said, I'm Dave. I'm a pagan. I said, Dave, it's nice to meet you. I'm Harry. I'm a Christian. <laughs> I shared some stories with him. It turned out he'd come from an orphan. He's been brutally treated and never heard about the love of God. And when I left him, he said, thank you so much. Well, you, you said earlier on that, uh, you said, before you came to know Jesus, I just said, you said, you knew about God. How did you know about him? Did somebody tell you about him? Or were you brought up in Sunday school? No. Um, oh, I did go to Sunday school for a, a short time. But the hymns at school, mm-hmm. the missionary coin, 
And then the senior school, they had a little lesson and they had hymns. Mm -hmm. And then scripture lesson. I thought Israel was actually in England. <laughs> uh, I was quite ignorant. No, I didn't. I know. A li I knew just a little about this God I sang about, but didn't know him. And the, well, you said when you first went to church, you went with your wife, of course, Kath, and you, you know you said nothing happened to you. How long did it actually take you for to, to um, say, shall we say, to realise that you needed Jesus from that particular moment? I think. I knew I needed him then, mm -hmm. but I didn't know about surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted God's forgiveness, <clears throat> but my life, my way, I was still doing, but trying to alter it to, to be good. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Uh, so, in, yeah, 15 months in the territorial army, God, and in between time, I was reading the Bible. And Ray Belfi was a good Bible teacher, and that was a dangerous place for me to be in. <laughs> Because God, uh, through all that, God challenged. I owe Ray Belfi the Lord. I honour him. Mm. Excellent. Now, you said that, of course, uh, bus driving was a stressful job. In what way was it stressful? You're dealing with all kinds of people, alcoholics, drug addicts, people having sex on the bus, uh, people having heart attacks on the bus, uh, dangerous driving, people cutting you up and all these things, abusive passengers, you can be the... Nicest person going for passengers, but let one go thing wrong, and the abuse you got was unbelievable. But uh, one day, a lady had a heart attack on my bus. You're the, uh, you're the captain of the ship, uh, and he was packed solid. And uh, first thing I said, anybody got first aid skills? Yeah, got somebody there. Ring the ambulance. Then I had to come to sit with this lady and take her details. And I said, would you like to pray for you? He said, please, the bus was packed solid. And like I say, I don't have a quiet voice. <laughs> I'll tell you, you never know what God will do uh, through mm. that. But I had no, I had no um, fear. Mm -hmm. Going through that same mistake, and I, I forgot to tell you, that many years after, in 204, I was just praising and worshiping God for what he'd done. And suddenly, I've never had a vision. I'm driving along, and I've got like a full television screen before me. There's a, a shot. Life Stories. Half Moon Wall at Railings. There's this little boy, Londo. He's got typical 1950s coat on mm -hmm. uh, with it like a plate. And he's reaching out, crying. The camera comes round at the back of the boy, who's reaching out at, and it was my mother, walking away with this man for some reason I didn't like. And God said this to me, Harry, do you remember that? I said, Lord, I would never brought it to mind. He said, Harry, when your mother abandoned you, I didn't. I lived uh, yeah. the of your life. But I've learned, Jesus said, I've come to all prison doors set the captives free. Because I've forgiven, I'm not a prisoner of anything that's happened to me. I've oh, learned yeah. to forgive. Now, has, has the bus company ever asked you not to speak to people about Jesus? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was so bad. I was going to take it to the tractor, and I got stopped for that. And Okay, it's the rules. But, you no, know, people would ask that he is singing. Sometimes you pass news if you're on standby, want to talk. Mm -hmm. And it happened to all of us. Um, some of the buzz, a lot of them have gone through trials. John, his wife, uh, sadly died of alcohol poisoning. David, his wife, gave him a choice. It's Jesus and me. And, uh, you know, none of us, have, I don't think you like playing say that every hunky dory. Because mm -hmm. if you want to serve God, Satan will make sure he will challenge what you believe. Now you said when you did, you stood up in the canteen, you said, you said, I become a Christian. And but you said they could see the change. What change could they see in you? Well, it certainly wasn't for they didn't see me stop throwing people about. <laughs> 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 it, 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 
the note I, I stopped swearing. And I started talking about Jesus. And I started caring. I think I started caring more for people and that people were important. I, I lost that cockiness. Right. And uh, started learning to care for people and care for the staff. I learned to care for the bus drivers I worked among them many times. Guys have come and I prayed with them in the problems. Excellent. Um, now, you also mentioned uh, dangerous driving. You, you said yourself at times that you, you drank a lot. How did you, how did that drive, boy, driving buses and drinking go together? <laughs> or well, did I, I, didn't, I didn't drink and drive. I was clear I would not risk my license. I would never drink and drive. Never. I made sure I was clear of that, even in the wildest days. Mm -hmm. I made sure I didn't drink the night before. So, and a lot of drivers do a lot like that. Oh, I see. So you're, you're very keen. Well, actually, it's been fantastic speaking to you. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure. When is the film coming out? On the buses? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was. There was a series. <laughs> that series is very true to life. Is it? <laughs> uh, immorality. Uh, all sorts went on. But I met the best of people, the worst those in between. Uh, alcoholics, some other alcoholics, we got coming to church, which didn't exactly please pastor. They'd come in <laughs> drunk. Uh, all sorts of people came. And you're a social worker, you're a tourist information officer. I've had people left the children on the bus, <laughs> uh, dogs on the bus, lost property. Uh, you are everything uh, as a bus driver. It's not just being a bus driver. It, it's Gradually, you learn to care for people. Indeed. Well, you've had to make lots of decisions, of course, as a bus driver and in your life. And all of those decisions you had to make, what was the best decision you ever made? The best decision I made was when I surrendered my life to Lord Jesus Christ. And particularly when it came to that place of full surrender that night, it was full surrender. I wanted nothing but Jesus. I was determined, him and him alone. Oh, I've fallen many times. I've made many mistakes. I think, and I thought, am I out now, Lord? But I found that no, God adopted me as His son for keep. God is responsible for me. He's responsible for you. He adopted us. He's a father. He's responsible for us. Amen. And He said, "I'll never, never let you go." And He hasn't. Excellent. And one final question before you go: Have you ever had a bus holiday yourself? No. <laughs> you know, on holiday, keep away from buses. Tell them about the bus. <laughs> Full stop. And it, it, I, I, you know, saying in Wigan we say buses. I've got to say Buzz. both paraffin and buses. Buzz. Um, <laughs> a lot of people, when we, Wigan has said buses, they've not a clue what we're talking about. The buses. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, some people out here think Wigan is the centre of the earth, you see. This is the problem. <laughs> nah, no, we don't believe that. <laughs> We just, we just get on with life and we can... Thank you so much, Harry. And with that, I'm going to hand back to my brother, Alan, who is from the centre of the earth, Wigan itself. <laughs> Lord bless you all. Hi, Harry. Well, thanks, Harry. That's really great. Thanks for answering those questions so wonderfully, too. It's been great hearing you. I, I've heard your story before, but the thing I heard tonight I hadn't heard before, but it was great hearing you share tonight. And I'm sure many people's lives will be touched by what you said tonight. You know, there are many people who watch this and who are going through different challenges. Please, right. remember what Harry said tonight. He, he surrendered everything to the Lord. And that's what God wants. Surrender everything to him. And he will watch over you. He will take care of you. So tonight right. again, thanks, Harry. Thanks, George. Thanks, Howard. And Amen. please, if you have any questions, any prayer needs, Contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Go, also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you can click on the Salvation Prayer link. You can find out how can I know God. You can get a Bible app. And I think George has wanted to say something. Yeah, just before you go, there's one, more, one message came through for Harry. Yeah. I forgot to mention it. It says, uh, tell Harry that he was a great youth leader and to thank him so much for his leadership. And his love. Well, that's great. There you are, Harry. There's encouragement for you from someone from the youth. Great. You, you, you're muted, Harry, but that, praise God. All right. So, um, as I say, you can go to our website and there you'll find lots of information. You can also uh, watch um, 
the other stories that have been on previous Monday evenings, you can go on to uh, uh, YouTube. They're all on there from the previous Monday evenings. You can also watch Lunchtime, uh, Lunch Live Stories TV, where you'll see uh, other stories every day apart from Saturday. Lots going on. And can I invite you to join us again next Monday at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock UK time on livestoriesworldwide.com. There you will hear a story next week from another man who was born in South Africa. Last week we had a South African, and next week we have a story from another man who was born in South Africa, but he came to this country about 50 years ago. Um, a man called Charles Gardner. He has a great story to share. He was... Um, he went to, uh, he was born on the slopes of Cape, uh, the uh, Table Mountain in Cape Town. He went to the University of Natal. And uh, although he failed academically, he did well at marathon running. And it was through that, that something happened that changed his life. He's also an editor of the New Life newspaper and many other things. He'll be sharing with you next week. So join us next week, eight o'clock, Life Stories Worldwide. Dot com on zoom on facebook and on youtube okay thanks again harry bless you keep god going bless you god bless, bless you all who watch tonight god be with you may you have a wonderful week god bless you and may you know life stories